So welcome to a, another Ryder Cam TV video and today it's a bit of a special one for me really because we are test riding the 2018 model of the BMW RT, 1200RT and I've been looking forward to riding this one so been looking forward to riding this one because I had a 2017 RT I think I parked it any closer to that if I tried did I? I had a 2017 RT and absolutely loved it and then went to the GS Adventure then went to the GS Adventure and kind of never looked back but I do like certain things on this or on the RTs over and above the GSs so we'll go through a few of those things in a minute so the 2018 model what differences does that bring from the 2017 model well it brings some new color schemes and i'll put the color schemes up in the video so you can see it also brings it's the gearing ratio has been changed and those wizards in bmw have made it smoother and better the quick shift is smoother the transmission is smoother apparently and we'll yet we'll be yet to find out now this bike obviously 2018 model hasn't got any of the new gadgets the new dashboard and stuff but I'm a real big fan of the dashboard of the 2016 2017 all the way from the 2013 actually um, RT dashboard I really like the display it's easy to read it gives you the impression you're on a much much bigger bike like a 1600 bike you know that's that sort of thing on its big brother and it's color and it kind of feels like you're in this age a little bit now the things that i really like about the rts i'm in love with the rts and it, for one thing over my adventure I find that my adventure's steering is very, very light. And ordinarily, when you're riding along, it doesn't make any difference. But in slow, slow maneuvering, you really do notice that your arms are moving around quite a bit. You can be wavering around quite a bit on the road. And sometimes it's a little bit unsettling that if you're looking over your shoulder, suddenly you've moved a, a few inches across the road and you know all that all that sort of thing and obviously you get used to those sorts of things but on the RT because it's got the tele lever suspension on the front it's a lot heavier on the front or certainly got the feeling of being a lot heavier and it's just planted a slow maneuvering you're not fishing around and moving the bike around just with tiny little movements on the handlebars it feels very much where you're where you're pointing is where you're going and certainly when we get to look at some corners and things a little bit later on it just leans into the corner and i know that you would be counter steering and all that sort of good stuff to get around corners anyway as any any rider would even if you don't know you've been counter steering i bet you'll find out that you have been counter steering and perhaps we'll do a a video on counter steering at some point but it's almost like you haven't got to do that sort of amount of work on the front to get it to go around a corner. As you lean it, it just tips in so nicely. So this bike, for all intents and purposes, is probably, it looks exactly the same as the RTs from 2013, 2014 and upwards. There's not a real whole host of differences All of the switch gear is BMW standard. Now, lots of people have had issues with the uh, cruise control button and you know the button stopping working. And you know there's not a problem other than it going wrong. It's a warranty issue, and and they'll replace it. But they are good buttons. They give you good feedback. You've whenever you press a button, you're under no illusion that you have pressed that button. The indicators are great. Although I'm a big fan, I'll probably get shot down in flames. 
but I'm a big fan of the right and left paddles for the indicators. I just find that I found those on previous models that I've owned so much easier. You're not hitting the horn to uh, come off a roundabout, especially when you're going round a roundabout, uh, certainly in England, and you're indicating right and you want to come off, but you're going at such a speed that you're having to feather the clutch, perhaps. Then to reach round from the clutch to change the indicator, it, it takes a little bit of skill and getting used to, to be honest. Whereas on the paddles, you would just flick to one or the other, which I found really easy. Now, it's one of those Marmite things. It's like a Microsoft and Apple thing. People either love it or they hate it. But I loved it. So this bike has got around about 125 brake horsepower, about 125 newton meters of torque for all you techie people out there. Um, I just know that it makes it go very well. And I know there'll be people out there chuckling at that. Um, it's about 276, 277 kilos, and it's got about a 25 litre tank. Now, I know from riding one of these around Europe, I did quite a big trip of about three and a half, four thousand miles through Germany and Austria and France a couple of years ago, and I achieved 61.8 miles to the gallon. Now, don't get me wrong, we weren't hanging about, we weren't speeding and, you know, taking things silly. But we were, were riding up over mountain passes around constant acceleration, deceleration, up and down the gearbox. And, and I thought 61.8 miles to the gallon was exceptionally good for a bike that is heavier than my GS. It was loaded with me, and at that time I was a little bit bigger, with all the kit that I wanted wanted to take or had taken with me as well as things like tents and stoves and all that sort of stuff because we went a bit native on that trip and to still achieve 61.8 miles to the gallon I thought was just exceptional. Now you do get on these bikes this lovely lovely wheel this is one of my favorite things on BMWs these wheels mm, love it. The reason I love it is because as you know both Mark and I um, ride for Magellan so we're around the world quite a lot and we rely not solely because we can read maps and we've got different apps with mapping systems and stuff on our phones but we rely quite a bit on our sat nav which would sit there if there was one on this bike now because it's uh, because we've got the BMW navigators we've got the fives although the sixes are out and they do look special, I must admit. But the fives work really well. And that wheel has saved my bacon so many times because it enables you to not only change things on the fly as you're going along, change routes, change a whole host of different things, but it also enables you to zoom in and out of the route that you've got selected. So when we're riding abroad, what we have for our customers and for us is those routes are pre-planned. All of those routes also have waypoints and those waypoints help us get to the roads that we know people are going to enjoy as well as coffee stops, dinner stops, hotels, that sort of stuff. But if you go on the route and you get to a waypoint and suddenly that waypoint is, I don't know, 500 meters down a little lane on the left because, you know, because that's the only place it could be, could be put on the map some sat navs will say you've got to go there before it crosses it off but you can obviously cancel that just by a flick of the flick of the button or just pressing the sat nav and i know you can do that on a lot of different sat navs so bear with me because i'm getting to the point rather rather slowly i know but on a long route where i've been thinking actually i haven't had any turns or anything for quite a while and i don't remember seeing on the map that i had to hand that this road was quite that long and am, am I going in the right direction? I don't want to be heading off towards that motorway because I know that we're not on motorways today. So I just scroll out and you can see the whole map in front of you with all the waypoints and it just gives you that sense of security that you are actually going the right way and you're not taking the wrong turn and ending up miles and miles out of your way, which is brilliant. It also helps with things like 
Um, we've been away and roads have been closed because of bushfires and all that sort of stuff. And you can zoom in and you can zoom out and find a route around it rather than just turning off and finding out that that road's going to go to nowhere. So you can kind of interact with your mapping system and work out which route is going to be best for you and kind of do that on the fly without having to continuously stop to find out what's going on. So look at this. Look at this. Falmouth without the rain. It does make quite a change. It does make quite a change. Now, now I'm doing, I don't know, less than five miles an hour. Look. No struggle whatsoever. Now on my GSA, I, I would be able to do that just as well. But the thing with this bike is because the steering is the tele lever rather than what I've got on the GSA and it's heavier I'm not having to make such small adjustments and some people might think well actually it feels just a little bit heavy for me but to be honest for me it just suits how I like to ride I haven't got to worry about making those tiny tiny adjustments that that could put you off track or off course so easily so the 2018 BMW R1200RT An evil looking thing, evil in a good way Just love the front of this bike Absolutely love the front of this bike Beautiful screen and for the 2018 they've obviously put different flashes of chrome everywhere The styling's much the same as the 2017 models Well, in actual fact, it's exactly the same. But one thing that I'm in love with, because I always have been in love with these dashes and dials on the RTs, it's just really nice, really special experience for you. I find it quite a special experience looking at this. You can move it, so don't be afraid to do it until it clicks. You know, it's quite hard, so don't be afraid to just really push it hard so it actually clicks in place. It's meant to do that. Um, and it's meant to just have that bit of damping in there as well so it actually doesn't vibrate. And I find that these dials, the font that they've used on the dials is really, really clear. And because this is a lot bigger, you can actually pick up the kilometers per hour as well, which is really good. I notice on the GS when I'm abroad finding and looking at the kilometres per hour is really quite difficult so some people have got little bits of um, sticky tape and stuff like that to indicate where they are for the for the uh, usual speed limits in Europe but uh, I haven't bothered I just take it off the sat nav and just drop it down a couple of miles an hour but there's loads and loads of bits and bits of stuff that you can go through. So by pressing the menu button, you can change all the dynamic ESA from soft, hard, normal. You can change it from one rider to a rider with luggage, two rider, uh, to a rider and a pillion. Can't get my words out today. You can have a look at the consumption and when you change this, it changes what's there. So you want range. Uh, a whole host of different things you can have in there the tire pressures you can look at so it tells you all of that information but it does it in a really nice clean way for me and you can set loads of different things you can all even have your speed let's say average speed but you can have in here the actual speed that you're doing in a digital form which i find really good so pressing the menu again you get to the trip now the trip auto that resets itself every 24 hours, I think. Whereas the trip two and the trip one, they will just keep rolling and rolling and rolling until you set them. Now the handlebars, uh, the heated handlebars, I really wish that they would bring this over to the GS and the GS Adventure range and the other ranges of BMW, to be fair, because by using the scroll wheel, you can actually put it up and it also tells you, obviously, where you are on the level of the heat, but it also gives you a little indication just there of what actually is working. 
so when you turn it off you'd lose it when it's on you can see the orange dot where the handlebars are to know that you've got those working so the next one is the seat heating now it working exactly the same way the seat heating is immense on this bike it really does keep your little bottom heart and who doesn't like a hot bot and it's all controlled by the scroll wheel so you can do it all on the fly really easily and again you get a little orange notification just there to show that the seat is the heated seat is functioning And then you can go through the user settings as well. So you can actually flick your uh, wheel to the right to go in and change the language, the brightness, the time format, format, have a start logo, you know, all of that sort of jazz. Set it back to the factory settings and really set the bike up and all the information that the bike is going to tell you in a way that you want, want it to be seen. And then when you press the menu button again, it takes you back to the main screen. Now let's see if we can get the mileage. So, there you go. So if you change it to speedo, just like that, and then go back to the normal screen just by pressing your menu button, that I used all the time. Unfortunately, you can't change it to kilometers per hour and then miles per hour without going and getting it plugged into the machine, which I find a little bit off-putting. Certainly on the one that I had, it was quite annoying, so I had to just get used to using the sat-nav. But above that beautiful screen down there, you've got all of your normal indicators, whether you've got your lights on, whether they're on auto, all of your indicators, your ABS, and your warning lights all around. Now all of the switch gear, as you would imagine, as we've already said, is standard BMW stuff. When you press the button, you really do know that you are pressing the button. You get a really nice, I'd say haptic or taptic feedback, but I don't mean that. You just get a nice feedback when you click it. The indicator I find sometimes a little bit mushy, but you do get that click when you click it over. And the horn is obviously there. I'm not gonna do it now because I'll probably scare some dogs or some young children and get told off. But this screen is, um, this button is one of the most amazing buttons on this bike that allows you to put the screen up. Screen goes up, screen goes down. Now, when you, turn, when you are riding and you set the screen in a position that you're happy with and then turn the bike off, it will automatically put the screen back down. And then when you turn the ignition back on, you might think, well, why is it not going back up? It doesn't go back up until you start moving off. So when you do move off, the screen will come back up to where you've uh, set it and what is the optimum position for you. Now on the left-hand side of the dials, you've got these big grills. Now, if you haven't got the radio, and the way to know that you haven't got the radio, one is by buying the bike with the radio or without the radio, obviously. But normally there would be a radio antennae sticking out of here which I've, I've always found a little bit weird why would you have that stuck out why would you not make it into or make the aerial integral into the bike so you don't see it i don't like the idea of that thing sticking out i don't, just never liked it but in behind there is nothing there is nothing in there the thing that i do like about this bike is this little handy handy cubby hole glove box whatever you want to call it it's a good little size it's not a huge size but I always found it was really good to keep my wallet um, and little personal items that you might need to get hold of when you're out on a trip it's got the rubber around it so it is waterproof I've been through deluges of rain and it's always kept everything dry and it does work off the central locking which is a bonus so you haven't got to worry about making sure that that's locked and then not locking the bike or locking the bike and then leaving that unlocked. Now a lot of people seem to want to, or a lot of people do, they put extra mirrors on here. They mount extra mirrors on the back of here with different contraptions that you can get from places like Nippy Normans and other places online. However, I find that these mirrors, although they're quite small, give me all the visibility to the side and rear that I need and because they are slightly down so you would be sat here because they're slightly down I find myself dropping my head down obviously to look in the mirror but then that also opens out the peripheral vision 
because I'm actually having to move my head to look in the mirrors rather than just flicking my eyes. And obviously, if my eyes were moving now, you wouldn't see it if I was riding along. But I've got to drop my head down to look in the mirrors, which then helps me with peripheral vision of what might be coming up an extra or other dangers and hidden dangers and stuff as you're riding, which I think is a plus. I really like these uh, mirrors. They're really easy to to move to your liking. You just push them where they are. Unfortunately, you end up with loads of fingerprints on there, but you know you can wipe them off with a with a duster. Now the bike has got a massive rack, not only for grab handles for pillions, but also the proprietary fittings for the top box, which I must say is humongous and it is absolutely massive and also very expensive. So just so that you're aware, on mine, my RT that I had, bear in mind it was a 2014, so you'd have to check that they fit, but the older top boxes fitted on there without any issue. They did, it didn't wobble around, it didn't cause any problems to the bike, it locked on the bike, there was no problem. So just bear in mind, before you spend a thousand pounds on a box that's got dampers so it opens up and works with your central locking, have a look around and see if there's any other boxes that are a little bit cheaper that will fit on there, because I'm sure you'll find them. The luggage on these bikes, exceptional size, really good size you can get a helmet in both the right and the left side and obviously if you had a top box you'd be able to get your helmet in there but there's one big downside for me with these panniers well two actually one is that when you open it if you're not stood in front of it and you've packed it that just bounces away now I know that they have got these straps in here and you can get bags to fill up so that you can put all of your luggage in there which is great and that will keep it in there. But I found the luggage bags, although they fitted really well, you kind of lost about an inch all, the, all of the way around because obviously the bag's got to go in and got to be taken out but you've also lost this space here and I know that they've, they've engineered it so it fits on the bike and it fits around the frame and obviously you've got a big bowl here that will add to the add to the storage that you get but I found it a real pain because of the shape and in comparison to the GSA and the GS panniers they're square so I've got bags that I can literally just drop in whereas here you've got to put it in put it in behind there make sure that's shut and then ram this shut and hopefully it hopefully it locks properly it is a good system but for somebody that spends a lot of time riding and unpacking and packing I found it a little bit cumbersome and a bit a bit hard to pack things like shoes and things like that because you don't want to bend them over and break them um, so for me although I love the the panniers and the luggage system on the RT it doesn't quite cut it I just wish they were a little bit squarer but I guess that would take away from the aesthetics of the bike the locking mechanism is really easy to use you just shut literally shut the pannier and you click it down to take it off you'd need the key because you can release the pannier which that as you turn it it flicks the handle up and literally you just lift it off it couldn't be simpler it really couldn't and then to put it back on literally just with one hand straight back on it fits into place and then you click that down and just move the key back to where the dot is and take it out now it has got central locking on this one so you do get a handy little button and you can hear it unlocking or locking and unlocking and you know it's locked, it's not going to allow it to come off or to be opened, which I think is really good. Some people might think it's a bit of a gimmick, but I actually think it's quite good. I certainly got used to it, and you do get used to these sort of things when you're riding on. It's just like being back on my old RT, you know. I'm going to put the screen up. Now I found that the screen, some people might not like, look at, might not like looking through the screen. But I found that the, the ability to be able to change the screen's position a really good thing as you're going along with a button. Purely because going along here, I don't really want to be looking through a screen, but I do want some wind protection. So I kind of would have it at this sort of height, so I'm looking over the screen. But then if I'm on the motorway or dual carriageway where you know, you're doing 60, 70, 75, 80, 
you want some sort of better protection. And you'd think that it would be like driving a brick through wind, but it's not, it really isn't. It cuts through the wind so well. And these, these side skirts, these side deflectors are really effective at keeping the wind and the rain and everything off you. And to the same extent, the, the styling of the bike is all around the rider, making it easy to ride. The seat is comfortable. And because the frame comes so far out, because the frame comes so far out, you can see that the line goes past your leg. So I've been out on my old RT before and had a friend that's been out on his, I think he had a Thunderbird at the time, and we went through some atrocious weather and he was absolutely drenched. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I did get wet, or the outside of my clothes did get wet, but not to the extent that I noticed it at all. The wind and the rain was just shout, taken away from me. The bubble that you're kind of in really, really did work and keep all of the rain, all of the wind, all of that horrible stuff off you so that you could just spend more time riding, which is always a bonus in my book. We always want to be riding all the time. And I, you know, I know why so many people buy these and why they're such a good seller, not only for emergency services, but also for um, anybody that wants to ride this sort of touring bike. It's just, a, it's effortless to ride. It doesn't make you ache. You get off as if you're, as if you've just been for a small ride. You know, you're not tired when you get off. You've got all of the stuff that you need all to hand, you've got all of the accoutrements I reckon, like the screen and you know the heated seat, the heated handlebars, all of that good stuff with loads of good luggage space. Brakes are very good, they're linked from the front to the back, as with many of the other BMWs. The quick shifter on these bikes is immense, it really is. That second gear into third, into fourth, you don't even feel it. You know, going down again, not even a jerk of the bike, not even a minor movement. All you know is you can feel the click on your foot, clicking it into place, and it just does it. So, we have managed to find a few twisties. Not very many, but enough, enough to ride on. So, let's go and see what it's like. I know what it's gonna be like. And I really wish I didn't like this bike as much as I do because, oh, this is a dangerous thing to be doing. Riding these bikes, it's lovely to ride all, all of these bikes. It really is. But it's so dangerous for the pocket. It really is. But what I do like about this bike is this corner's quite tight. And yet I've, I just feel that this bike is just taking me around without any effort. And if you lean the bike, I am counter steering slightly, but it just falls into the corner. It really does just fall into the corner to the extent that going around this corner, I'm not going to put very much pressure on the handlebars at all. And obviously I've changed my speed because it's quite a tight corner, but look, kind of no, nothing on there. But I've just lent the bike in and it just goes around the corner. It's just an immense bike. So the hill start, Really good feature, really good feature. You literally, on the brake lever, grab quite fiercely and leave go, and then on the display you get the H. Now I take it out of gear, and now we cannot move. And this is just brilliant. So to move away, once this bus has gone, obviously put it into gear, now you have got two choices. You could put your foot on the foot brake and you could grab and leave go until the H disappears. Or if you wanted to, you could keep the H on. Now you bear in mind, you have to give it a little bit more rev. So don't be afraid to give it a little bit more revs because it's gonna to have to release the brake in order for you to move off. So a few more revs, take the clutch out. You'll get a warning triangle come up to say that it's it's, it's removing the brake and you're away. So now there's, there's no excuse for rolling back on a hill. And so, 
If you like the video, give it a massive thumbs up. It really does help us. Got a shout out to our friends at Ocean BMW, where we've just turned up with Andy and his team for letting us take the bike out. And if you've liked the video, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell so that when you hit the bell, you're alerted to when we get our next videos out. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.